The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency uh, Muketsi Mayoro, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Lesotho. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency? I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency uh, Muketsi Mayoro, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Lesotho. I invite him to address the General Assembly. Your Excellency, Ms. Abdullah Shahid, President of the 76th Session of the General Assembly, your Excellencies, Heads of State and of Government. Your Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the government and the people of Lesotho, I extend our most sincere congratulations to you on your election to preside over the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly and wish you every success in the discharge of your duties. We are confident that your personal, diplomatic, and leadership qualities will guide us through the session. My delegation assures you of our full support and cooperation. Let me also pay a well-deserved tribute and express our thanks and gratitude to your predecessor, His Excellency Volkan Bokir. We thank him particularly for his statesmanship, sterling guidance, and effective organization during the difficult times of the 75th session. To Secretary General Antonio Guterres, we are deeply indebted for your continued dynamic leadership and commitment to our organization and for your relentless efforts in achieving the organization's goals. We particularly commend you for tireless efforts during our arduous time when COVID-19 reared its ugly head and upended our world. We also congratulate you on your re-election for a second term and I show you of our utmost support. The convening of the high-level week of the General Assembly is yet another opportunity for world leaders and policy makers to demonstrate their resolve and political will to further advance the purposes and principles of the Charter of the United Nations through concerted multilateral efforts. It is also an opportune moment for the UN system entities to demonstrate their continued commitments in support of national efforts. Mr. President, allow me to thank you for advancing a very befitting theme for this session of the Assembly, namely, building resilience through hope to recover from COVID-19, rebuild sustainability, respond to the needs of the planet, respect the rights of people, and revitalize the United Nations. The United Nations was born 76 years ago when the brutality of war impressed itself on all far beyond human com comprehension and tolerance. The organization became a source of hope founded as it was on the inalienable, interlinked, and mutually interdependent pillars of development, human rights, and security. The resolve to form the United Nations was propelled by a determination to create a world of peace and prosperity. In his address, to the United Nations General Assembly on 28th January 2021. 
the Secretary General described a world in danger and warned of the consequences of failure to work together. He stated that 2020 was a year of death, disaster, and despair. He called for bold action to overcome the devastation in 2020 resulting from the global COVID-19 pandemic. It gives great pleasure to pay a deserving tribute to the Secretary General for galvanizing support and mainstreaming the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic in the work of the United Nations system. His leadership in spearheading and mobilization, in the spearheading, in spearheading the mobilization of resources through international partners is commendable. This session of the General Assembly comes at a critical time and momentous conjuncture in human history. Indeed, this is the time when circumstances compel us to, re to reiterate our plea to the international community to adopt an expanded and comprehensive response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Such a response would complement individual countries on concerted, concerted efforts to halt the continuing spread of the pandemic. We recall the COVID-19 omnibus resolution entitled Comprehensive and Coordinated Response to the COVID-19 Pandemic adopted by the United Nations General Assembly last year in September 2020, underscored the need to tackle health inequities and inequalities within and among countries through political commitment, policies, and international cooperation. The World Health Organization recently promulgated an unpleasant warning that unless nations act urgently to slow the spread of the coronavirus, the world could log another 100 million infections in the course of this year. Apart from posing a significant threat to health, the pandemic is also a serious threat to development. It is disrupting the functioning of domestic economies. Global travel, tourism, as well as trade. Locking down our economies is no longer an option many countries can exercise. We must therefore come together as the members of this August body to guarantee simultaneous access to vaccines by all countries. In this respect, my delegation fully supports long-standing and yet to be concluded proposals by South Africa and India for a temporary TRIPS waiver at the World Trade Organization, and call on all members of the United Nations to recognize that progress in vaccinating everyone means protection of all people on earth. My delegation expresses sincere appreciation for all initiatives recently taken through COVAX to address the needs of develop, developing countries especially in the development, production, and equitable access to COVID-19 tests, treatments, and vaccines. I welcome all, all the commitments made by President Biden yesterday to donate 500 million doses of vaccines to the rest of the world and call on others for continued solidarity and timely support. Mr. President, Exactly six years ago, the UNGA adopted a comprehensive set of universal and transformative sustainable development goals and targets aimed at ending poverty, protecting the planet, and ensuring that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. Now, with nearly nine years remaining, the prospects of the world reaching these forward-looking goals 
remain on the distant horizon. What is even more worrisome is the Secretary General's report covering the period ended July this year, which reveals that by the beginning of the pandemic, the world was already off track to meet the Sustainable Development Goals and their targets. This situation now has been exacerbated by the devastating impacts of the pandemic on sustainable development, with the most vulnerable countries, particularly the landlocked least developed countries, such as Lesotho, being the hardest hit. These countries, which expanded their financial balance sheets on coping with the pandemic in the last two years, now require financial stimulus to restart their post-COVID economies and to accelerate progress towards the full implementation of the 2030 Agenda. As we are heading towards the fifth United Nations Conference on the least developed countries in Doha, Qatar next year, we only remain hopeful for the consensus adoption of an ambitious new program of action that should properly focus on LDCs and above all, that will be geared towards ensuring that the severely struggling are not left behind in achieving the SDGs. Again, as we begin the decade of action and trying to build back better, let us remain steadfast in calling on the international community to significantly increase funding for sound health services, increase investment in physical infrastructure, scientific and technological development, research, and agricultural extension services in LDCs. We believe that such bold steps would help, help us get back on the trajectory of realizing the full implementation of the SDGs in this tight remaining period. Mr. President, with concern over climate change, creating a global coalition to achieve climate neutrality by 2050 should be high on the UN agenda ahead of COP26 in Glasgow later this year. The recently published report of the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reveals that it is now certain that hot extremes have become more frequent and more intense across most regions of the world, while cold extremes have become less frequent and less severe, thereby confirming that human-induced human climate change is the main driver of these aberrations. The report further asserts that some recent hot extremes observed over the past decade would have been extremely unlikely to occur without human influence on the climate system. This suggests this greatest challenge of our time manifests through excessive rainfall, desertification, hurricanes, land degradation, and so forth, thus diminishing our capability to eradicate poverty and improve livelihoods. It is equally important to note that biodiversity losses and ecosystem degradation, just like climate change, are also among the top threats facing humanity today. It is therefore clear that now more than ever, there is need to take urgent and bold global actions to combat climate change and its impacts on humanity. Similarly, the onus is on us as leaders of the world to ensure that our Mother Earth does not lose its biodiversity, as this poses a threat on food security and livelihoods of people across the world. To ensure conformity with the Paris Agreement protocols, over some years now, the Kingdom of Lesotho has joined efforts with the rest of the world to increase climate change resilience and improve the well-being of the Basotho nation through mainstreaming climate change into our development programs and implementing concrete measures for adaptation and climate risk reduction, mitigation, and low carbon development to achieve green growth. Furthermore, 
There are several initiatives and programs implemented by the government of Lesotho to address the impacts of climate change. For example, Lesotho submitted her nationally determined contributions report to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in June 2018, outlining initiatives to be undertaken to reduce greenhouse gases and adapt to climate change. In addition, some of the noteworthy initiatives are the integrated catchment management, improvement of early warning system, formulation of the national Adap adaptation plan, and improving adaptive capacity of vulnerable and food insecure populations in the country. Again, Lesotho intends to unconditionally lower her net greenhouse gas emissions by 10% by 2030, and to further push for an additional 25% greenhouse gas emission reduction, provided that external support, including capacity building, is made available to us to cover the full cost of implementing the adaptation and mitigation actions. Guided by the principle of leaving no one behind, Lesotho continues to call on the international community and other regional and international organizations to support climate change adaptation and mitigation efforts and strengthen resilience, particularly to vulnerable countries, thus bringing attainment of SDGs within a reasonable reach. Mr. President, it is the obligation of all member states to promote and protect the rights of all. We are therefore pleased that this important factor has over the years remained on the agenda of every session of the UNGA. The international human rights instruments provide a clear path and a legal framework for all states to fully advance the status of vulnerable groups in a quest to ending inequalities in our communities. My own country, Lesotho, is a long-standing party to international human rights treaties, such as the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and the Convention on the Rights of the Child, to mention just a few. It remains a responsibility for all member states to pursue a common goal of ensuring the effectiveness and enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms for all. It is, however, disturbing that in conflict-stricken regions, particularly in armed conflict, civilians still endure inhumane treatment that is in violation of laws and regulations established to protect humankind. Lesotho condemns all forms of attacks on civilian populations and urge parties involved in any form of conflict to cease aggressions and engage in talks genuinely aimed at achieving long-lasting solutions and promoting human rights for all. Mr. President, trafficking in persons continues to be a chronic challenge affecting the globe. Member states are facing challenges on how to translate the international efforts to combating all forms of trafficking in persons into reality. The Sutu fully supports the 2021 political declaration on the implementation of the United Nations Global Plan of Action to Combat Trafficking in Persons, and therefore calls upon all member states and all stakeholders to accelerate implementation of all guiding tools as contained in the outcome document. This year, we celebrate 20 years since the adoption of the Deben Declaration and Program of Action, which together with the relevant outcome documents provide an inclusive United Nations framework and solid foundation to fight the scourge against racism and racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. Lesotho acknowledges progress achieved in other parts of the world to fight against racism. However, it remains a major concern that the plague persists in all parts of the world and a vast number of human beings continue to be victims to this date. Lesotho therefore urges all member states to collectively promote and protect rights for all and restore dignity of the peoples who have experienced the worst brand of the evils of racism 
racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. Mr. President, revitalization of the United Nations General Assembly merits our attention and should remain high on our agenda, especially at this time that there is dire need for solidarity and unwavering commitment to multilateralism and to the United Nations. Lesotho would therefore like to echo other member states in calling for an inclusive UN system which encompasses equal representation of all regions in all the major organs of this august body. Strengthening of the UN organs, particularly the Security Council and the Economic and Social Council, would also ensure that all the political and socioeconomic challenges that humanity is currently facing are tackled collectively in an efficient and effective manner, thus leaving no country behind. Member states of this organization have increasingly yearned for its reform in order to make it more democratic and responsive to the needs of all nations, rich and poor, big and small, strong and weak. We should recall that the last reform of the United Nations was in 1963, some five decades ago. We are convinced that this is the opportune time to raise critical issues regarding the reform of this world body, to enable it to meet the challenges and the threats of the 21st century. A daunting task indeed. We regrettably note that some member states have relegated to the back burner critical issues of development, giving priority in state to security issues. To move in unison, the international community should strive to advance the global development, human rights, and security agendas simultaneously. Terrorism, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction to non-state actors, the existence of nuclear weapons, and armed conflict top the list of global security issues. On this note, we commend the Secretary General for convening the second United Nations high-level conference of heads of counterterrorism agencies of member states in June this year with the overarching theme of countering and preventing terrorism in the age of transformative technologies, addressing the challenges of the new decade. The conference provided a significant and timely opportunity for participants to consider the practical implementation of relevant aspects of the United Nations global counterterrorism strategy. The Kingdom of Lesotho consider, considers it the responsibility of the international community, with the United Nations playing the central role, to put in place effective measures aimed at preventing genocide, ethnic cleansing, and the atrocities perpetrated on women and children caught up in armed conflicts. Consequently, my delegation considers the enhanced role of the major organs of the United Nations, particularly the General Assembly, to be of paramount importance. Lesotho is supportive of any effort that will bring about lasting and sustainable peace in the Middle East, in conflict areas in Africa, and other parts of the world. In today's globalized world, it is indefensible and incomprehensible that decisions which bind us all are left in the hands of a few members. Reform of the Security Council, which takes into account the aspirations of Africa as a spouse in the Isoluini consensus and the Sierra Declaration cannot be postponed any longer. Transparency, inclusivity, and democracy must inform the work of the entire United Nations system. The Isolini Consensus provides a progressive implementation of a fair and prudent reform of the Security Council, which is crucial for the, for, for the African continent's representation in this new multilateral world order. Mr. President, it is in, in the 21st century that peace 
security, and the right to self-determination, respect for all human rights and fundamental freedoms must be guaranteed as the norm rather than the exception. Hence our call for the right to self-determination of the Palestinian people and complete withdrawal from their occupied territories as well as the independence of the Sahrawi, Sahrawi people. We also renew our call for lifting of the unilateral economic embargo against the people of Cuba. These matters must be addressed and resolved urgently, comprehensively and honestly, without fear or favor and without malice to anybody. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been going on for far too long. It is about time that individual interests gave way to compassion and reason so that the people of Palestine can enjoy their inalienable right to self-determination in our lifetime. The road to lasting peace is paved with pain and hardship. Difficult concessions will have to be made in order to satisfy the desires of both sides. It is our view that the conflict must be ended through negotiations that are based on the respect of sovereign equality and the recognition of the rights and legitimate concerns of all parties involved. The people of Western Sahara yearn for peace, freedom, and the attainment of a right to determine their own destiny. For many years now, efforts by the United Nations to facilitate transition to independence have not yielded any concrete results. It is regrettable that the continued denial of the Sahrawi people's exercise of their inalienable right to self-determination remains unresolved. We look forward to the conclusion of the process in Western Sahara so that the people of that country can freely determine their own future. Over the past three decades, the UN General Assembly has consistently voted against unilateral coercive measures through economic, commercial, and financial blockade of Cuba, but to no avail. As a result, the people of Cuba have been subjected to undue suffering, which was, which was further exacerbated by COVID-19. We renew our call for the lifting of this embargo that has had an adverse impact on its economy and brought untold sorrow and agony to the Cuban people. Similarly, unilateral coercive measures continue to be applied on the people of Zimbabwe, despite repeated resolutions against the same by the community of nations. We renew our call for removal of these sanctions. Mr. President, the real test for the United Nations in this century is how far it is prepared to go in addressing all these challenges and how far it will go in turning promises into reality, thus enabling a large majority of the people of the world to fulfill their potential and realize their aspirations. While we appreciate the magnitude of these challenges, we continue to have faith in the United Nations, in the United Nations' capacity to solve global problems, its broad universal support, and its ability to uphold and reaffirm our shared values of peace equity, social justice, democracy, and human rights. I wish to conclude by pointing out that we often come here to set loft, lofty goals for members of the United Nations, but fail to walk the talk. History will judge us harshly if we continue to defer the aspirations of people across the world in their quest for equality, freedom, peace, and prosperity. Such is the call and challenge staring in the face of the, of the United Nations in the 21st century. I thank you for your attention. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Lesotho for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Italy to introduce an address by the head of government.